just my heart thumping with all the, the, the extraordinary stuff that's happening on that screen. I always felt like the freak was to Wentworth what Voldemort was to Harry Potter. <laughs> I've been like a pretty die-hard fan of Kate since I was about 15. So I was shitting myself. Oh, God! It's not common enough for queer people get to tell their own stories. That's why you keep hearing that we are such a family, and we are. Mm. Um, we are. Hi, I'm Erin McWhirter from Foxtel magazine and I'd like to welcome you all to our second panel with the cast of Wentworth. Before we begin, I'd like to acknowledge the traditional custodians of the land and pay my respect to the elders past and present. I'd also like to thank Fremantle and Foxtel for the opportunity to run this panel today and celebrate the season eight launch of Wentworth. Usually we'd be all in a theatre somewhere, live talking to you with the cast, but the beauty of Zoom is that we can bring this to all of our actor members around the country. So welcome to you all. Since premiering in 2013, Wentworth has been seen in 90 countries across the globe and has won 18 awards, including four actors. And now let's get to the cast and introducing them. The acting force that is Pamela Rabe, who joined Wentworth in season two and has been keeping us on our toes ever since. Hi, Pamela. Hi, Erin. Hi, everyone. Kate Jenkinson, who's been portraying Ali Novak since season four. She's been a former drug addict. She's loved, she's lost, she's now killed, and she comes back in season eight as top dog. <laughs> Hi, Kate. Hi, Erin. Katrina Melisevich, who needs no introduction. She's been there since day one as the lovable, bumbling, Monte Carlo addicted, but prison muscle boomer, who we love. <laughs> Hi, Erin. Hello, everyone. <laughs> the opening sequences of season eight introduce us to two new cast members. Actress Kate Box joins us as tough as nails former top dog, Lou Kelly. Hello. Hi, Kate. Hello. And we also meet her trans boyfriend, Reb Keane, played by Zoe Tarakis. Hi, Zoe. Hello. Hi, Erin. Hi, everyone. Hi, Great to see you all. Thank you for joining us today. How are you all? I mean, God, it would be a miss not to mention um, the devastating pandemic that's taken the world, you know, <laughs> mixed things upside down and turned it upside down at the moment. But... People have said to me that they've found a lot of entertainment in watching television, watching entertainment online, mini theatre shows or poetry. I saw Zoe had one on YouTube. So <laughs> I wanted to ask the cast, like, how important is the entertainment industry in um, just bringing a bit of that, that kind of escapism during a time like this? Um, maybe Kate, if we'll start, Kate Jenkinson, if we'll start with you. Uh, well, I, I mean... Isn't it true that the entertainment industry is one of the oldest industries in history? Mm -hmm. And I can, I can understand why, because I think it's important for human beings to see their life and their stories told back to them um, and reflected. And, and storytelling, I think, is a really important way of unifying us, um, especially now in, you know, when we're so spread across the globe but we are unified in what's going on globally with the pandemic so I, I mean I think that this industry has always been incredibly important but now more so than ever because I think that bandying together as um as human beings is, is has probably never been more important than it is now and um for me I think watching Watching stories, hearing and seeing art is, it can be instructive, informative and most importantly, like uplifting, which yeah. is what we need in the world yeah. right now. Definitely. And Pamela, you, I don't know if you, have you done any theatre stuff online? Like I've seen a few people have done that over this time or, or what do you think about the escapism and what the, the entertainment industry is offering? Um, I've been involved, Erin, uh, and not in actually um, producing anything for, um, for online broadcast, but I, I'm, I serve on the board of a, uh, a 
one of the theatre companies in Australia. And um, I mean, these are terrifying times for so many arts organisations and artists and arts workers. So there's a lot of conversation and chat going around, how do we survive? We know we will, but how do we do it? Uh, because as Kate Jenkinson said, we all, um, we need it not only as a kind of um, comfort, but also, um, like Kate said, to make sense of what we're going through. And not only is it something that unites us um, in space around the globe, I think it also unites us in time that if we see ourselves in a perspective, a perspective, yeah, yeah, in perspective mm -hmm. over a huge yeah. chunk of, you know, human inhabitation of this planet, um, it helps us deal with things and make sense of them, you know, mm -hmm. and it's the way in by sharing our stories that we remember to, I think, listen and respect each other yeah. and then helps us know how to act. Yeah, yeah, no, definitely. It certainly does. And I did ask the other panel the other day to, uh, to, to kind of talk about things that they've done in COVID that they probably wouldn't have done. We have been staying at home. We're in lockdown. Um, people have taken stock and had a lot more free time. So I wanted to ask you guys the same question, things that you've done in, in during this time that you wouldn't have usually done. And maybe Kate Box, we'll start with you on that one. I, you know, the only room in my house that has a lock on it is the toilet door and I have three small <laughs> so I've spent a lot more time in the toilet during <laughs> before in my life. I've done a lot of crafts. I can make like anything out of raw penne. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, I've kind of, yeah, I mean, I've learnt where my limits are in crafts as well. Um, yeah, I did a lot of entertaining small children. And a lot of the time it was glorious. And some of the time I locked myself in the toilet. <laughs> and Zoe, I was saying before that I saw your poetry video. So what other stuff have you been doing in quarantine? Oh, well, I'm, I was back at my folks and I'm an only child. And so um, I had a lot of time to myself and with my thoughts. Um, and so I did a lot of um, impersonating people in musicals. Um, maybe too much of that. Uh, and a lot of making dumb videos for Instagram and trying to get better at the guitar. And that's what I did for three months yeah. straight. And are we any better at the guitar or? No. No, because I gave up and got upset. <laughs> <laughs> and Katrina, what about you? Oh, I, I, unfortunately, lockdown isn't that dissimilar to my normal life. <laughs> I'm such a homebody anyway, so I was in heaven. But I also <laughs> was determined that I was going to be incredibly creative. I was going to um, pretty much solve the world's problems in that time. <laughs> Didn't happen. Not happen. <laughs> Didn't happen. I don't know why. I was glued to the news every two seconds. I still am. You know, I, I just, I, I, I was sort of frozen in time, but that in itself was profound, but that's a whole other story. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and Kate Jenkinson, what about you? Yeah, echoing what Katrina just said, I'm, I'm a classic introvert. So being told to stay home and not touch people was heaven. <laughs> um, so I, I kind of enjoyed it on that level, but I did, I noticed what was most important for me was I think out of necessity, you reach out to people and I, I reached out to the people who were closest to me. I spoke to my friends and my family more in that three month period than I feel like I have all year and, and every year since. And so that, it actually crystallized for me. God, it, it's so important to connect with the people who know you in the real world because you know at, in our job we connect with our peers at work and you know I, I put myself on social media and so you connect with people that you don't know on social media and lockdown for me really kind of reminded me to get busy in the real world with my real friends and my real family. <laughs> and Pamela were you into connections and stuff too when when you were in lockdown? Um, yes, all different kinds of connections, perhaps, but although I did, like you, Kate, um, you know, I reconnected with lots of my friends from overseas who I hadn't spoken to for ages, and all of us just trying to sort of share the kind of dread and wonder of what's going on on the planet at the moment. 
Um, I, we were stood down the last week of March and uh, my husband and I immediately got on an airplane to Tasmania where we have a property and um, I was so glad we got there and we were able to uh, quarantine in our own home, not in a suicide suite in an airport hotel. And, uh, and it was the most extraordinary and wonderful place to be, just listening to nature and a lot of music that I haven't had a chance to listen to for a while yeah. and to cook and things like that. Mm -hmm and think, think about what we're going through. Yeah, absolutely. And what was it like to get back to set? Because I mean, obviously Pamela, you had to come from Tassie back to Melbourne and I, I'm not sure about the rest of you, I think you're all Melbourne based, but yeah, what was that like to, to get back to set and, and start up again after having that forced break? Pretty extraordinary. There was a lot of this going on. <laughs> we weren't allowed to touch, we were all PPD'd up and, um, but I think it's been, I would say probably for everybody, it was so wonderful to um, to be back with our work family again mm. and working. Mm. Yeah. What about you, Zoe? What was it like to get back on set? I was a bit um, overwhelmed. I'm a massive extrovert and, like, need people so badly. And so being surrounded by people again was just like Christmas. Um, and so I kind of just wanted to burst into tears the whole time because I was so happy to be around people. Um, yeah, it was heaven and it just, I don't know, it makes you really realise how grateful you are to be working on what you're working on and be surrounded by the people you're surrounded by. Yeah. And were you guys launched straight into intense scenes? Because that seems to be the get-go with Wentworth. <laughs> like if you're a new cast member, <laughs> it's like straight into like the the scene that, you know, puts you in the <laughs> thick of it, Kate Box. What were you thrown into the first day back? <laughs> Well, I think because we had two days left, I think it was two days left of, of an episode to shoot. Um, so it was, once we got onto the new episode, it felt, <clears throat> kind of, here we go, we're going again, but picking up the kind of explosive end of the episode <laughs> that we almost finished did feel like a bit of a shock to the system, <laughs> having to re-enter, yeah, that world again. So cold felt like jumping into a freezing pool and just swimming kind of as fast as you can. But yeah, there's definitely no room to to um, ease back in. Yeah, yeah. And, and Jenko, you've had quite a few of those kind of intense scenes over the years. Were you, were you a bit the same diving back in? Yeah, there, there's no such thing as a soft landing in in Wentworth. <laughs> you, I remember I being on set with um, one of our new cast member, members, Vivian, and her first day on set was so brutal and epic and it looked like she'd just been, um, you know, it just it looked like she'd just been fed to the wolves. <laughs> and so, so it was really interesting seeing her go through that because it reminded me of, you know, my first day on set too. But, yeah, it's, uh, it's a gauntlet that you have to run daily. Yeah. Um, but And having three months break and uh, three months of sleep in has kind of made it all the more difficult to get <laughs> thrown back into it. <laughs> but you guys do get to wear track suits so we do at least you you know we're all doing that at home at the moment you know I dressed up for today but the uggies and the track suits in full swing <laughs> at the moment. Yeah. I'm Paris from the waist up that I'm like no yeah <laughs> it's, a, it's a nightmare from the waist down yeah that's right yeah <laughs> And Katrina, looking back at, um, you know, it was an epic, every finale, every episode is epic, but the finale and the siege, the two-parter, it was absolutely um, epic. While you're in that, did you feel that it was massive? And then when you watched it back, did you see that it was just incredibly huge? Yes and yes. Uh, <laughs> I still have not gotten over it, to be honest. I, I uh, yeah, it, it was so super intense like I can't even yeah I just one thing after another and 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 because with particularly the siege you know that that um went on for so much of those um I think it went over the two episodes or was it just in one I don't know because it felt yeah. like it, it yeah. went forever and and you know so on on a practical and technical level the continuity of where you were sitting and how you were feeling and just went for days and days and days and it was amazing what, what like quite a privilege but also it really took a toll and then having to 
kill Lizzie. <laughs> oh, God. Um, that also took a toll. Um, however, that, you know, it, it, there, there, yes, there was so much going on and I still think about it and I still walk into certain parts of the set at work and it comes back to me. It's like it's, it's going to be in my body for a long time. Mm. Um, yeah, it was nuts. It was so nuts. Yeah. How Because Kate Atkinson actually said that the other day about how she thinks she'll finish Wentworth and have a, a stomach ulcer because of the psychological um, scenes that she's had to play out. I mean, yeah, you said, how do you come down from that, Katrina, then, when you've played, like you were saying, it was you know, it, so intense for you and mm. how do you chill out then, do you? Oh, Erin, I, I, I still, after eight years, don't know the answer to that. Because <laughs> the thing is, yeah, it, you know... Acting is, you know, it's pretend, but but it's but you're in search of truth. So I, I you know, I don't want to sound like I'm you know, a, a, an actor wanker, but <laughs> it, it, you know, you, you're always in search of, of of truth. So your body doesn't actually know that you're just pretending mm -hmm. when you're going through all that. It has no idea. Your brain does, but your body and your psyche doesn't. So it's quite. Um, it does have quite an extraordinary impact and I'm starting to see now just how much over the years uh, it, it has kind of fed into A, how I feel about myself, B, how I feel about the world, um, the way I see the world. Uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's certainly changed my life in that way and um, I don't know yet how to unwind from that. I'll figure it out <laughs> one day. Get back to it. <laughs> Thanks. So you were nodding then. What's your take on it? Yeah, I was just thinking about the fact that it, I mean, I, I I concur. It 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 does affect you, and you, you think that you can have a certain level of control over your artistic agency. You know, you know it's fake, and you can switch it off as soon as cut is called. But sometimes not. Sometimes it, it creeps inside you in a way that is unexpected and it, it can be traumatic and certainly some of those scenes were but the irony is is that I'm sure all of us would agree that as an actor that's what you want like that's what you dr you dream of being on a show like this mm. where you get to play with the most extreme levels of humanity and human suffering like it's sick and twisted but I that's what I want and I mean as much as it does kind of feel like you've um you run a marathon emotionally and physically. I, I know I'll look back when this is done and, and miss playing with this level of stakes. Mm. Yeah. And Pamela, for you, I mean, obviously not in the siege, but we saw the freak in those final dying minutes of that episode. Um, but when you watched the siege back, what did you think of, of what the guys had done with it? Uh, I just thought it was extraordinary. I mean, I watched it like the rest of the world watched it, you know, as it was broadcast. So it was just, um, I mean, not only do I have this sort of split thing going on, which is watching, you know, friends and colleagues who I have a huge lot of respect for do great work, but at the same time, I'm just, my heart's thumping with all the, the extraordinary stuff that's happening on that screen. I thought it was amazing. Yeah. And like you, Katrina, too, I felt, you know, there's been a couple of scenes that I've had to shoot now in, parts of the sets that where terrible things happened. I had a scene where I was right on the spot where Kaz met her end. And it's just like, there are ghosts now. There are ghosts all around mm -hmm. that place. Yeah. And Kate Fox, for you, obviously hadn't been in Wentworth for the siege. We, we see you enter this new season, but did you watch the finale and what did you think? Oh, I mean, yeah, it's heart stopping. <laughs> <laughs> and I watched it knowing that I was coming into it as well when I saw it. And so, of course, you're sitting there like a small child waiting to get <laughs> the roller coaster as well. <laughs> um, and then coming in, you know, the, the set does really hold stuff in it. The first mm. time you walk around this set and you go into those showers and you go into, yeah, places where there's memories of some horrendous things, some incredibly tender things. You 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 do feel it there. You get little glimpses kind of like shadows and um and also i i did find that the the death of lizzie uh like so so deeply sad i i, I was quite traumatized by that and um so coming in knowing that a show that has the capacity to kind of like be have, give such action but also 
mm. really like put your heart um, on the floor, <sighs> really um, daunting and exciting thing to know that I was heading into, yeah. And you, Zoe, heading into it, what did you think? Oh, I thought it was like some of the best TV I'd ever bloody seen. And I don't, I started the, the second last episode of season seven at like one in the morning. And I was like, oh, okay, I'll get halfway through. I'll watch the rest tomorrow. Oh. And I finished the whole season. I was up to like four in the morning. <laughs> like just howling. <laughs> so moving and also terrifying. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah, and then coming in, I think what everyone else has said, like you feel the energy of those people and those things beautiful or horrible that have happened in that building. Like, I remember the first time I went into the laundry and I kind of wanted to be sick. Like, it was so, you know, there's just so much energy in those places. Yeah, it's incredible. Katrina, I know that we're, like, I felt the same as Kate Fox in terms of the Lizzie scene. Like, Celia has been such a part of the show since the beginning. And you, you know, how were those scenes to play? I mean, just devastating for you guys as characters, but also just as castmates, I guess, as well. Oh. Like I said, I'm still not over it and I still miss her every day. She's fine in the real world. <laughs> I can't remember to tell myself that. <laughs> and I still talk to her all the time. <laughs> but it was, um, oh, God, it was terrifying and I was terrified of that scene. And but the sad, sad bit is, it, well, the, the, the thing I'm grateful for is that the affection between... Celia and myself is 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 real and so it made that scene quite easy in a way I didn't have to do anything the words just felt right um coming out of my mouth I didn't have to do anything in a way so um and she oh see I'm going back there now it, yeah it <laughs> yeah that 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 was hard but I'm so grateful because you do, I mean, to get a chance to 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 play scenes like that is such a privilege in this country and in this in this industry. So I feel very, very lucky. And I think when this is all said and done, it's gonna hit me like a ton of bricks, just how unbe- unbelievably amazing this whole ride has been. Yeah. Everyone I've spoken to has said that Wentworth is like a family, but from the get-go when you join the cast, you need to bring your A-game. Like I know I've spoken to Jenko when she joined and, you know, now speaking to Kate and Zoe. Like is that what you guys felt when you joined the cast, Kate and Zoe? It was like bring your A-game straight away? Yeah. (laughs) I think they were cast though because they are (laughs) A-game. That's true. Yep. Good call. (laughs) Yeah, I mean, I think because on this show you get to, like, place, you know, in, the stakes are so incredibly high almost all of the time. Physically you have to really meet it as well. Every time I start a job I go, oh, I forgot to get fit and I really <laughs> felt it this time. Like, I really <laughs> um, And, yeah, but it, it, it was so incredibly welcoming. People felt, and, and knowing that, they'd lost some really core cast and <laughs> kind of feel like you're coming in as like, hey, sorry, I'm sorry, I'm not there. <laughs> like, there is <laughs> I'm wonderful. But um, but I felt nothing but, yeah, support and warmth and um, like it felt like genuine excitement that, yeah, we'd come on board and, yeah, Zoe and I and Jane were all, we were all very grateful for that and Viv, yeah. yeah. It, f- it feels like that, don't you think? I mean, I, I can remember... Before the season one even went to air, I ran into Chris McQuaid on the street mm. who played Jax Holt. So they were just mm. finishing filming. And um, I said, how's it going? She said, oh, this is a good one. This is a good one. And I think some, from the beginning, everybody knew around the traps mm. that um, this was something that you wanted to be involved in. And because of that, the creators of the show have had the ability to attract the absolute A-game top talent in this country. And actually there's been a few people from around the world that have said, can I be in it too? You know, that it, because it's, they know it's, um, it's special and these opportunities don't come around very often. So yeah, so mm. it's been an extraordinary roll call of the best cream of um, female talent that Australia has to offer, but really across the board, all talent. 
yeah no it absolutely has been and I, I guess that comes from as well the crew and the writers and behind the scenes as well how important are they to bringing this story to light Pamela do you think um, absolutely crucial mm. extraordinary group of writers um, um, Marcia Gardner the chief um, writer who's the supervisor who's been sort of marshalling us through this this um this story is uh extraordinary and i think the um it's such a testament to the power of her and her team that they can create such binge worthy drama that you know it gets i mean it gets me every time when i sit and watch i watch that siege not knowing that the character my character was going to come back mm -hmm. so i mean i'm just watching it like everybody else and it's just like you zoe you know i'm up all night just going <laughs> oh just one more just one more, just one more. <laughs> I mean, it, and that's that's no mean feat to pull that off for seven seasons and i'm pretty sure we're going to be able to i mean what they've come up with for these last 20 eps is pretty amazing yeah. and Katrina you were nodding there in agreement you've been there since day one the the writers the crew behind the scenes oh my god you know I yeah <laughs> we are so incredibly lucky and I know because you know I've done other stuff and uh we just the chemistry between each department is extraordinary the support i can only speak for myself as an actor the support i feel from those guys is extraordinary and i i want to do everything i can for them too because they are they know their stuff and they're so onto it i, I don't know how they do what they do and I'm, I'm talking about you know art department i'm talking about the grips i'm talking about the camera department i'm talking about the, the writers i'm talking about marcia's job i'm talking about their yeah it's um uh, how we, we got lucky we we got we got a, a, a chemical reaction that worked and and that's why you keep hearing that we are such a family and we are mm. um we are we just are because <laughs> there's so much trust there and so much admiration Mm. Yeah. And Kate Box, did you, when you came onto set, had you worked with any of those people behind the scenes before? Because Jane Hall was saying that she she had, having, you know, worked on other productions. Was that the same for you? Well, I'm not Melbourne-based, so not a lot of them, but, yeah, a few here and there. But I think also because we're all in the same building, which yeah. is kind of unheard of. I mean, we're not all each other's paths now unfortunately because we're all kind of zoned off to different areas under new protocols but um we yeah you come in and uh, when we were first here you could go walk in and talk to art department or you know you could walk in talk to us access kind of all areas back then which meant that you really felt like you were creating this together you had an idea of something that you wanted to put up in yourself and you popped down and you had a you know word to them and then that afternoon you know it was just a really yeah, well put together puzzle, I thought. Yeah. yeah. And how much trust goes into it, guys, like with those people behind the scenes and with your co-stars? Like, Janko, do you want to talk to that a little bit about the trust that you guys have to instill in each other and that might be unwritten as well or unsaid, it's just there? Yeah, I think I kind of I certainly benefited um, from that coming coming into the season uh, coming into the series at season four I'd already seen the first three seasons and so I already knew that it was it was all there I didn't have to the way that you often have to do with the show if, if you're doing the first season of it and you're initiating it you just kind of have to hope and pray that the tone is right that you look right that you sound that you sound right that all you know the confluence of departments makes it work but i'd already seen three seasons and it was abundantly clear that it was working it was working very very well and so i uh, i already had such a, a deep level of trust with the show and how it had been set up so yeah, I kind of, I kind of felt like I just had to trust, trust mm. in the script, and and go for it. Mm. I had this scene. And I think something, something. Oh, sorry, go for it, Boxy. I just had this scene the other day where I, I, I read a letter. The audience never knows what's in the letter, and I opened it, and it was the most extraordinarily written letter in the most exquisite font that suited the moment so well. And I just thought. 
And it was purely something that was going to play out in silence. Nobody would ever know what's in this thing. And the effort that went into that from several departments, I just, I was gobsmacked by. It was really, yeah, quite extraordinary. So in terms of trust, you just go, everybody's looking out for everybody. Mm. And we're all trying to make a show that is, um, yeah, has got a lot of, integrity and heart and guts and humor mm. and yeah it was great that's, and that's even more amplified in these times yes mm, yeah. definitely pamela that attention to detail would you agree over the seasons you've been in it like a, a oh yes like and i do have an eye for detail <laughs> yes <laughs> i mean absolutely i'm there there i have a crush on all of them and paris mckenna smith who's our props master and is my right hand um you know, I I rely on him so much because, um, as I've said in the past, um, Joan Ferguson does love her props. But, um, yeah, absolutely, the detail is extraordinary. Mm -hmm. Kate Saunders in the art department, the kind of, um, um, I don't think it's a spoiler because I think it's in the trailer, but um, where um, Joan Ferguson finds herself in the opening episodes of this new season um, is a kind of... Um, uh, humpy and um, they pulled me over to the set to kind of give me the once over and ask my for my input I mean this is kind of unheard of mm. uh, it, mm. it's great that they do it but it's unheard of and the kind of care and respect and collaboration that happens in that environment is uh, is extraordinary and and, and Kate Box that's kind of the one of the things that I do miss that because of the particular protocols that we're having to work under at the moment it's just a little less um, we're not allowed to move around as much as we have been able to in the past. And we're, I'm having to work off the memory of that a bit. And there's a lot of um, through glass. Mm, thank you. Yes, thanks. <laughs> <Love> you. <laughs> <laughs> Happening at the moment. But Sanitizing. It's... I love that. <laughs> yes, that's right. Can I, can I open the door? <laughs> um, Pamela, we saw at the end of last season, the freak in the final minutes. So how did that all come about for you and you were approached to come back and, and what did you think when you were asked to return? Well, how the hell can that happen is what I, I first thought it was. <laughs> um, I, um, uh, I just got a phone call asking if um, I would be um, interested in coming out of that box. <laughs> and um, I... I um, um, I think it was, I felt it was quite important that, uh, I mean, I mean, I know that particularly Joan Ferguson as a character is responsible for some of the more gothic uh, extreme elements of the storylines in Wentworth. Uh, so that I, I, I knew that I was going to be asked to do some pretty extraordinary things, but I just wanted to make sure that that had a baseline of, uh, that was kind of earthed in a, in something that felt as truthful as what everybody else contributes to those storylines. And, so, and they've put a huge amount of work into that. Um, and uh, and and given me a lot to, to chew on. There's, there's still a few little kind of gothic moments. I love the fact that she, I mean, she is such a cockroach, or as Kevin Kyle and I, our startup director, said, she's wisteria. No matter how much you try to chop it down and get the roots, it still just keeps coming up. Um, I feel I'm responsible for a bit of the Countess Dracula creature from the Black Lagoon elements of the story, and um, they've given me quite a lot to chew on. It's beautiful. Yeah. I'm um, so glad to be back, I have to say, just to work with oh, these beautiful glad human beings. You. Yeah, we're glad to have you back. I'm sure, yeah, the cast would agree. It was Kate Jenkinson. I know that in our cover story for Foxtel magazine this month, you talk about the freak coming back and you're like, it's not Wentworth without the freak. Can you talk a little bit to that? Yeah, well, I think if you're if you're telling a story about um, humanity and the tr and the struggle to survive and and really um, you know, on many levels, Wentworth is about good and evil and, and the good and evil within ourselves and how we try and hold on to our humanity or in some cases, perhaps even in Joan Ferguson's case, like the inability to hold on to um, humanity and, and therefore the, the inner cockroach comes out. You can't, for me, you can't have a show like that without the head cockroach. Mm. And, and, Pamela delivers that and then some with the freak. I always I always felt like the freak was to Wentworth what Voldemort was to Harry Potter. <laughs> and you can't have you can't have that series without Voldemort. Um, because other than that, who are we fighting against? Because I think Joan Joan represents 
the corrosion within us all, kind of metaphorically, in mm. Wentworth. And that's what makes it really interesting. So I always hoped that Joan was not dead. <laughs> yeah. Because I don't, like, I, 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 I personally, I feel like any finale, like any... Any ending to Wentworth that didn't involve the freak and what happens to her is going to be an unsatisfying one. So I, I personally always wanted that character to come back and I'm mm. so glad that she did because, of course, we didn't know that that was the case. It was never, it was never written in the script at the end of episode, season seven. Um, that was an afterthought once we found out that we were going to have more episodes to film. So it was, it was an exceptional surprise to know that not only were we coming back to film more episodes, but Pam was reprising the role. Mm. Yeah. And Katrina, what about for you? What was that ending like for you to see the freak there? Or you would have read the scripts, but yeah, what did you think of the return? Both Pam and the freak have such a presence. To be honest, I, I, it's almost like she never left. Mm. She her mm. presence always there so it didn't um surprise or, or freak me out at all it just felt right mm. yeah of course of course she lived of course she's here yeah. yeah so and it still feels like I still see Pam and just think Pam's yeah she never went anywhere <laughs> she's here you know it feels right that's yeah. no answer <laughs> <laughs> you're me both <laughs> I have seen those first, the first four episodes of this season and Pamela, I have to say, the way that the writers have brought the freak back in and as a Wentworth fan, it was like exactly like Katrina just said, yep, oh, she's back here, of course. Like it's, and did you feel that way when, it, when you were reading the scripts and returning? Uh, I don't even know how to answer that. Mm -hmm. I mean, other than that I, they took a lot of care. Um, I was, of course, grateful, and, I, and like what Kate Jenkinson said too, as well, because I think uh, the, what she serves in that story is that the kind of challenge of evil that never goes away, and by which we are judged and uh, tested. You know, all the other characters, including Joan herself, really. Um, that, that battle never goes away. It, it felt. Um, I can say on an intellectual level, it felt right. But in the end, I was just enormously grateful, as I said before. Uh, um, uh, and, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And um, let's talk about the freak and what can we kind of expect this season from her without giving too much away? But what, what can, in a few words, what can people expect? Well, that she'll shake things up, that's all. <laughs> <laughs> and what about for you, Jenko, in terms of your character? Obviously, top dog now. Um, what what will we see, Ali, when she returns? What kind of person is she? Well, she's got a new haircut. That's very important. <laughs> um, no, I think I think the glory of this job for me personally, but I think for all, for all actors that have been a part of it, and I'm sure for the the writing team as well, is that a character is never just two dimensional. I honestly feel like I have played six different characters in the one character. I feel like every season she has been on a completely different trajectory. And, and in season eight, you meet her at the very, very peak of her self-awareness and strength and power. And um, the beauty of that though, is that the only, the only reason that she got to that level of, um, ownership, like self-ownership, is by being completely obliterated emotionally, physically, psychologically. Um, and so knowing that she only got to that point through all of the devastation that she had to wade through to, to get there is kind of, um, it's so it's so perfect for the world of Wentworth and... Um, on a personal level, on a personal note, it was just incredibly gratifying to play that character, owning her bad badassery, uh, because it's a side of Ali that we've never seen before. So it was mm -hmm. it was super super fun to play. 
and actor members will get to see that in a sneak peek of the first episode this weekend and also some scenes between you and Kate Fox with Lou Kelly. So, Kate, talk us through Lou Kelly. I mean, she's one badass biatch, let's just say. <laughs> she's like, you don't want to be on the wrong side of her. But, yeah, talk us through that. Yeah, she's got a temper. <laughs> <laughs> Smidge. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah, Lou... I mean, Lou's got a long history in prison and a long history in this prison and so comes back in kind of ultimately knowing her way around even though there's a lot of new people to contend with. But I think what differs for this time when Lou comes in is that you know, she's coming in with the love of her life and um, Rev and, yeah, has got has actually got something to lose and has got something, you know, someone to protect and someone to fight for. And so can't necessarily be the cowgirl that she was because she's got, yeah, she's, yeah, she's got to stay standing. Um, but, yeah, I, we have a lot of fun run-ins. <laughs> you know, there's a lot of, she definitely makes her presence felt when she first comes in. There's a history with a few people there and, She's um, she's not afraid of violence and she's not afraid to dish out her own um, forms of punishment and she's also got an incredibly macabre sense of humour so it doesn't always, it's not always so tragic <laughs> as she's doing it. Um, yeah, so it's, yeah, it's a pretty fun, it was a pretty fun explosive way to come into the series. Yeah, I had a blast. Yeah, she's fab. She, she is. She fab. is. She's great. And Katrina, we see Boomer and she has a history with Lou Kelly that she's trying to tell the other prisoners about. So what's it been like for you to work um, alongside Kate and to welcome Zoe as well to the fold? Oh, amazing. I was so excited when I, when I heard that they were coming on. It's um, it was so exciting. And um, I still am. <laughs> on, I still am. And, um, yeah, it uh again it feels like they've always been there and um uh, it's so much fun. The joy for me as an actor is 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 doing all my homework and you know fretting about everything and then letting it go and getting on set and then getting to play because there's something going on in the other person's eyes and and you know there's an agenda and two agendas at play and um I think particularly with with Booms and Lou Kelly, there there is a history, and it's an interesting one, and um, isn't it? <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> and it's yeah, that it's it's been extraordinary, and um, it it still is, and it's yeah, it's, uh, I don't know what to say without giving anything away, yeah. but um. Yeah. I can't wait to see what actually happens because there's still stuff I don't know that happens. So um, we'll see. Did that answer the question? I don't even know. It did. It's good. Just went on it a oh, good. <laughs> good. And Kate Fox, what's it been like for you to work with Zoe? Did you guys know each other beforehand or? Yeah, we had met quite a, you know, yeah, we had met. We didn't know each other a bit. Zoe had house set for me, not telling me if they were allergic to cats, which is why I <laughs> spent a week in the house kind of. <laughs> dosed up um it was great you know I think where we can it is so important for um queer people to be involved in queer stories mm -hmm. and knowing that Zoe and I were coming in to represent this couple in Wentworth was really um really important to me mm -hmm. I'll get a bit emotional thinking about it. <laughs> I think um yeah, it's time and um, being able to rock up to set knowing that, you know, we were a part of creating this couple. Um, yeah, was was really amazing um, being guardians of that story and, and those humans and, um, yeah, and you, you don't get that very often on our screens where you, where you get to tell, where queer people get to tell their own stories. It's not common enough to have us in the driver's seat. Um, so, yeah, it felt great and it, I felt braver and more confident um, stepping into this place, yeah, because of that, mm. which is a, um, 
yeah, which is something that should be afforded more often. I was really grateful mm. for it and I hope it happens for a lot of queer actors. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Definitely. Mm-hmm. How, did, how did you guys work on that relationship? Because from the get-go watching it, it's the chemistry's there. So, I mean, did you audition and together and, and that's how they found you or how did, how did that all come about? Um, well, Kate had already been cast and I um had my audition and then did my callback um with Kate and and I've been like a pretty diehard fan of Kate since I was about 15 so I was (laughs) shitting myself oh Um, (laughs) god and um and I went in there and uh yeah the chemistry was just there and I think it's always been there and it's not something we've had to work particularly hard for it's just um yeah it's always existed between Reb and Lou, um, and I think you can, I hope you can feel that between them. Mm. You can. How important is the character of Reb, Zoe? Um, in this country right now, I think pretty integral um, because if you look at trans representation thus far, it's pretty terrifying here in Australia. Um, and, you know, you've got some amazing, like Georgie Stone, Neighbours, like, thank fuck, things are changing at the moment right now. but. Um, If I had had uh, a character like this played by a trans person um, when I was like 16, 17, I think it would have changed my life Mm -hmm. and saved my life a little bit. Um, Now I'm getting emotional. Um, Yeah, and I just think it means so much more to the community represent, uh, to see someone of that community tell that story because ultimately they've lived it and they know it. Mm. Um, Yeah, and yeah, I've always thought that trans people playing trans roles is going to save lives so I I hope it does certainly save mine what reactions have you had just from the trailer so far in terms of have you had any fans reach out to you yeah I've had a a lot of people from the community just kind of saying thank you um, for telling that story but I don't know I think the whole time I've just felt that I need to thank the community for letting me tell that story because it's a lot of, you kind of feel the weight of the entire transgender community of the world <laughs> and uh, the pressure to represent them accurately. And so, I don't know, I just like I have to thank that community for letting me tell their story and my own, yeah. yeah. And Kate, working so closely with Zoe, are they doing a good job at that? Oh, God. Extraordinary. Yeah. Just extraordinary. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Take over the world. Yeah. <laughs> And and Katrina, Katrina, having been there since day one, how important is a story like this, do you think, in Wentworth and also being the final season to send it off? I mean, it's so important, I think. Absolutely. Absolutely. I think, you know, this this harks back to what we were talking about at the beginning of of, of this panel uh, about the importance of, um, of, of the, the arts in that, its job has always been always to to reflect the community in which um, you know it, it exists. And the thing that I found um, growing up, and you know, it's alluding to what Zoe's talking about too, is that what it can do is tell you you're not alone. You're not alone, and that's why it is so important that yeah, we're telling this story absolutely and without judgment, and without opinion, and without anything other than watching two people mm. in love. Mm. We're still you know. really badass, though. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, criminal. Like, really like selling fairy floss on the corner or anything. <laughs> no, it's mu- just as misunderstood. Much- just misunderstood. <laughs> <laughs> And as much as I um, feel privileged to be part of a show that um, feels it can present these stories, the irony is not lost on me that this is all happening in in a prison. Mm. You have to incarcerate women in order to kind of find a platform for this. Yeah. Uh, and I look forward to the day uh, when Zoe doesn't have to feel the burden of a community behind her. It's just we are representing who we all are. Yeah. And, um, uh, so we've got further to go, but onward and upward, I say, and I feel like we're caught now in a in a cataclysm where it feels like almost for the first time, conversations that have been going on for a very long time, mm-hmm. finally we're in a position where maybe we can listen to each other, mm-hmm. collaborate mm-hmm. with each other, and actually 
real change is possible. And that feels really mm. exciting. So I'm looking forward to the, um, the shows of the future. Yeah. I mm. hope I, I can be part of them. Mm-hmm. And what about you, Janko? What's your, I mean, I know you've always, you, you support, like it's such a great show, bringing all these different characters to the forefront. In what Pamela just said, do you agree? You obviously agree with that. I uh, yeah, I don't think I could have uh, said it better myself than what has already been said. Yeah, these are magnificent humans, but yeah, just just to reiterate that you know what is art? Why why are we here? What is the point? Unless it's reflecting what is happening in the real world, and um, and it would be an incredible disservice <clears throat> to not tell this story. Mm. Um, Reb and Lou's story because it's real life Mm -hmm. and certainly heightened in a fictional world within a prison but these are real people's stories and historically stories that have just not been told Mm -hmm. or historically they've been told in a way that keeps those people marginalised or to the side and what I like about how this story has been told and, and because Kate and Zoe have been the guardians of those characters there has been an even more concerted effort to make their voices loud and heard and normal, mm-hmm. normalised. And I think that's super, super important too. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to give that, that does, does it, you guys have just done an exceptional job. And those first, as I said, I've only seen the first four episodes and they blew me away and I can't wait for everyone else um, to, to see them. Definitely. Um, now, Pamela, I know with the freak as well, everyone was on tender hooks. They want her back. They can't wait for her, her to be back. Um, in terms of, I think they do. I, I was happy to see her back. And um, I I'm mean, glad you're happy, Erin. There'll be a lot yeah. of people. I'm just, I'm, I'm waiting for the hate mail. <laughs> yes, go on. <laughs> Have you, that was going to be my question. I mean, what reaction do you get from people on the street and, and in relation to the freak? Uh, and not a lot. What I feel, generally speaking, is the love for the show. You know, that people are gen- mostly really, really kind of respectful and excited, um, excited to see, and also to know that these stories are coming from their midst so that when they run into you at, at the market or on a tram or wherever you may be, it's... Um, it's reminding them that, that this, these stories are coming out of this community, you know? And so generally speaking, I just feel that, um, and, I, and certainly I, it amazes me how much, um, how often you get um, bailed up by people in the public when I feel that uh, a show that basically is on a pay TV platform, which doesn't sort of easily reach into everyone's homes. Uh, I'm amazed at the kind of reach it has as a, as a program and how much love there is for it out there. Yeah. And Katrina, what about you having been there since day one? Do you get, I was talking to the other panel the other day and they said the reach now of Wentworth is global. I mean, it's seen in 90 countries now. Have you had any fan experiences outside of Australia that have been a bit, yeah, where where and what were you doing? Yeah, I actually, uh, I don't know if Pam remembers when we were in New York last year, um, I, I was I, I was really <laughs> so unprepared for how 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 many people um, watched Wentworth in America. I had no idea, and even you know Pam and I walking into Sephora. <laughs> Do you remember that Pam yes, yes, in Times Square? <laughs> And the, the lady at the... Looking for beauty products. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and we got some. Um, yeah, it was quite bizarre. There was, a, like, a, a woman at the door there who, who sort of was so cool. She said, yeah, you girls are, you know, from Wentworth. And I'm like, yeah. <laughs> so bizarre. Um, yeah, all over the place. I, I, yeah, in France, in, in England, it's, yeah. I'm still, God, I'm such a Luddite. I, I don't get... <laughs> How? How do you know? How do you know us? <laughs> you know, it's so bizarre. Yeah, it's it's pretty amazing. Yeah. All over the place. Yeah. And, and Janko, what about you? I mean, I know a few of the cast have had actual letters from people, like prisoners that have written to them over the years. Has that, yeah. have you ever had any of those letters or emails dropped by your inbox? 
I've not I've not received any letters from inside the slammer, although that I I would be chuffed with that. That would feel very full circle. Mm-hmm. But no, there, I mean there's some there's some extreme uh, commitment <laughs> to this show out there. <laughs> Uh, my name is tattooed on people wow it, I don't know how to feel about it but there it is um but it's it's kind of great and it's it's a once in a lifetime I think event that you're a part of a show that not only do you love and you're passionate about and proud of but the entire world agrees with you mm. and it's it's not lost on me that it's it's um it's a very special uh it's a special show for that reason because we want uh, you know as as artists we want people to consume what we do and to like it and to have it resonate with them and to know that this show does that on such a um and on such a large scale it's it's pretty gratifying yeah yeah now, I know we don't have a lot more time left and Kate looks like she's on set as well. All of us are at home. It looks like Kate is actually on set and has to get back. But before we go, I just wanted to um, to ask you guys, and we did this with the other panel, if you were to go to prison, which none of you are, but if you were in real life going to go to prison, what is the one essential thing that you would take with, yourself, with you and why? Um, and maybe we'll start with Kate Fox. I know I could see your eyes thinking just as I threw to you then. Um, I mean, like right now? Yeah, right now. Soap. Soap. Soap, I said soap. A lot of soap for me and all my friends. (laughs) (laughs) Friends of it, yeah. And Pamela, what about you? Oh, God. I got music. That's all Mm -hmm. I would say. Music. Music. Any type in particular or? No, everything. Everything. All the music in the world. (laughs) On Spotify. (laughs) Yeah. Well, maybe not. No, premium. Yeah. (laughs) Um, Jenko, what about you? Uh, God, I mean, I'd I'd probably try and bank a contraband phone just so I Mm. could... I could like start some kind of a racket on the inside where people pay me money to use the phone and... I'd, I'd probably try and I'd probably try and start some kind of a, a business in there. Also, <laughs> just like maybe to call a lawyer to try and get me out of there. <laughs> Good one, Katrina. You? Oh, look! Well, I know you're not allowed to sort of bring anything in, but I'd I'd have to I'd bring my partner. <laughs> <laughs> sure He's very entertaining. <laughs> I'd have to protect him, but yeah. <laughs> I'd want him to do that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I, ch- I changed my mind. I don't want music. I just want Rodney as well. Yeah. <laughs> he'll love that. Oh my God, he'll love that. Yeah, they're going to love you guys for that. Yeah. <laughs> and Zoe? Um. Oh, I'd probably bring my partner too. And if not that, I'd bring a guitar because I have a lot of time to get better at it then. (laughs) I'd like to thank you guys so much today for for coming and doing this panel. I know that the fans and the actor members are going to get a lot out of it. So thanks for taking the time to do it. Thanks, everybody. Have a good day. Bye. 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 Thank you.